hold of, guys. Now, if you remember in this video, I showed you how to take this guy, get up in here and actually gain access to your EEV nut right there. I want to tell you, everything in this video on how to get to the point to where you have the pan down is dead on. Removing the fan, or you know, removing the plastic, removing the styrofoam pan, disconnecting the wiring to get access to the bottom of the unit. It's exactly right. But I want you to stop right there. Use that information in this video to uh, pretty much get you to the point. But I don't want you to continue to where you have to cut into that. I was taught that. That was the, the way I was taught to do it. That was the only way that the people who gained access to it at the time knew how to do it. And uh, this week I actually encountered another situation where the EEV was not working. It was asking to, you know, say 800 pulses and I had 73 degrees on my gas and liquid pipe so it was doing nothing. And I wanted to be able to verify that the motor was good or bad. And I had to get access to it, but I didn't want to have to go through all this to do that. And I knew that I took the pan off before and I had the pan off of the unit to try to see if I could get access to this thing. And what I found was in this video right here, there's my raw footage. And what that pan looks like once you get it down, it's all styrofoam. And I found, let me hit pause on this bad boy. Right there. Anyway, what I found was, I got through all that, because I'm looking and looking, and it's like, okay, here's the, there's the EEV nut up under there. If I can find a spot where I can see it. Anyway, the EEV is up under there. And at the time, I thought that was the best way to get to that thing. It was to cut through the side and gain access to it easy peasy. Well, I'm here to correct, make one correction. I'd use, I'd use my previous video to get you access, take the fan out, take the pan out, all that stuff. That's dead on. Clean the pan, whatever. Here's where I want to make my, uh, my correction. I'm always for non-invasive repair, no altercation whatsoever, or having to alter anything in order to work on it because it just seems too difficult. This little piece right here has two screws. And... I can't remember which side the line sets on. It's on one of the it's it's on one of these sides over here, one or the other. Once you take those out, that's going to drop because this holds this side of the coil and that side of the coil together. And if you look, you'll notice where it slides in there. And this kind of slides in on the other side. It catches in. When you take those two out and it, remove it all the way, get it out of the way. This, this whole coil will drop down about two, three inches. No big deal. Your EEV nut's right, right there. You can get two wrenches on it, back it up, take it off, and change out the head. Didn't know that. I had a forest for the trees moment, you know, when I was working on it before. And I had a little more time this time. I had more experience. Was able to look at that and thinking, oh, wait a minute. You know, having replaced one of these coils before, kind of remember that piece slid down so I thought I wonder you know if that line set will support it it's only two screws and so I did took it down got the wiring out of the got them out of the clips and I uh, slid that piece down when I saw the EV there I, I really really I really felt stupid I did I'm telling you it's just it's like why in the hell didn't I do that before why didn't I see that, you know? So kind of what I want you to do. I want you to, the other video will get you to this point. You need to take those two screws out, drop it down out of the way, get your EV motor off, put the new head on there, run your wiring like it's supposed to go, and then 
put everything back together. The other video also shows you how to put it back together. But on the information to where you cut the foam to get to it and gain access, ignore that. You know, do this instead. This is a lot better. It's probably the, the way Daikin would, if Daikin gave you a step-by-step -step procedure on how to change it out, this is probably the way they do it. Um, and the good news is I was able to get access. I unscrewed the EEV motor head. And as soon as I did, I, I heard refrigerant flow. And then I, I cycled power once more because I had cycled power before to see if I could get that motor to kick into gear or kind of move and do whatever. But when I cycled power again, I watched the stem and I could hear it grinding the gears in there and the stem didn't move and uh, verified that the motor was bad. And then I got it all back together, you know, just snugged it down. And when you put them back together, you don't have to, cr you don't have to back up the wrench or you know you don't have to have a backup wrench to tighten that EEV motor down. You tighten it snug with the wrench and that's it. You don't have to crank it down. But I snugged it back on, shut the refrigerant flow off. I got everything back together, pan back together, wiring in, got it fired up and the damn thing started working. So I figured what happened is it's got a bad spot in the gear and it started working again. So we're, we're gonna, I'm gonna request replacing it because it's not gonna last. But this is a non-invasive way to doing it, and it's so much simpler because that pan, you know, you have to drop the pan anyway. And I just want you guys, you know, or any guys that know how to work on this stuff or are learning how to work on it, and they see this video trying to find a way to replace it, I want you to know, in combination with the other video, use this information to do it properly. Um, yeah, I just can't, like I said, I just can't believe I didn't see that before. And uh, once you see it, it's like, you know, damn, well, that's just a hell of a lot easier way to do it. Well, yeah, it is. So you'll learn a lot of things on this stuff as you mess with it more and more. And on the three by three cassettes, you know, the, the bigger ones, the round flows, there's a lot more to take down. The coils are bigger, but I do believe that your coils are connected by the same style uh, metal, you know, your metal connector right there. And I believe that's why they put it that way now that I think about it. You've also got your liquid and gas pipe thermistors back there. You can gain access to them that way easily. Sometimes the gas pipe thermistors are down here at the bottom. And you might be able to gain access to them without dropping that down, but the, the liquid's usually never in the same area. It's always like higher, out of the way. So when you're doing like thermistors and you want to, uh, you can't have access to them from the bottom right there after removing the pan, you know, there's another tip that you can probably take that piece of metal down and gain access to that as well. And you gotta have small hands obviously to get in there and clip and you gotta be careful. And it's hard to re-insulate them. You need to re-insulate your thermistors when making repairs. But it's, you know, about the only way you can do it. So I wanted to update this, and I hope you guys uh, appreciate you guys watching these videos. And just wanted to do, it, do you guys justice by giving you an updated, what I feel the proper way to do this. And I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll catch you on the next time.